Hello, my name is Arian and welcome to the first episode of Generic Fantasy Miniatures. A series where I explain you how I sculpt minis that you can use in tabletop games or for painting in general. I will explain different materials, techniques and tools uh, to help you sculpt your very own minis. In this episode I will explain the very first step, making an armature, the skeleton of your mini. First up, metal wire. I use several types of metal wire depending on what I want to sculpt. I have this uh, thick one, I have a thinner one and uh, a brass wire. You will see me use this thicker one on the dragon later on in this video, but for the most part I will be using um, this thin metal wire. Uh, the brass wire is really soft. I use that for armatures that require a lot of bends on a small part. For example, I used brass wire for the hands of this uh, bust that I sculpted. Check out the video if you want to see more of this one. I used this snipper to cut off a piece of wire and I use uh, pliers to bend the wire into the desired shape. Uh, you can use your hands, but uh, it's difficult to get like a nice sharp angle sometimes. Like you can see here, it becomes uh, curved instead of angled and with a plier you can really get like exactly the angle that you want. I prefer to use uh, pliers that have uh, teeth like here you can see it is like teeth on the grabbing surface of the plier and with this one it's completely flat and sometimes you can have issues that you start to uh, slide off the metal wire that you are trying to bend. Um, I also use uh, a ruler sometimes if uh, to check if parts that should be the same length are in fact the same length. To make sure each miniature will be in the same scale I use the one inch grid to sketch out the figures I want to sculpt. This sketch is not meant for details but only for proportions of the armatures. Using the grid and the average height for different fantasy races I can sketch out the proportions of each mini in relation to each other. If you don't want to sketch out your idea by hand, you can also search for a reference image and do it on your computer. Just do whatever you are more comfortable with. The idea for this series is to create an adventure party and some monsters. Instead of showing you how I've sculpted every mini separately, I will focus on techniques, tools and materials I've used in the process. This means I will be switching the video between different miniatures depending on what I'm trying to explain. This allows me to create a video about different subjects that I'm sculpting instead of one video for each miniature. For example, I will have a video focusing on anatomy, one on clothing, different types of accessories and much more. Like this, you can use these videos as a guide for your miniature sculpts but also for conversions on existing minis. I have a feeling that this is an awesome idea, but I could be wrong, so please tell me what you think about this. Let's start bending some wire. How I start is that I take two pieces of wire and I grab them both with a plier. I then twist them together as tight as I can and this twisted part will be the torso and the four ends will be the limbs. I check the height of the torso with my reference drawing to make sure that it is exactly right. I then bend the mini's legs outward and grab the lower part of the torso and just a little bit of the leg. I then bend the legs downward creating the hips for this mini. To create the knees, I place the upper part of the leg along the drawing and grab the wire just above where the knee would be. I then bend the knee backwards about 90 degrees and bend it back again. As you can see here, the lower leg now has a slight curve to it to accentuate the calf muscle and the knee. For the feet, I take my measurements from the drawing as well. Here you see me bend the second foot 
To be sure I bend it on the right spot, I put the legs together and align the plier to the first foot. To get a sharp angle, I bend the wire as close to the plier as I can. Uh, sometimes, when I can't get the angle right, I use my second plier. Like that I can focus all of the force on exactly the right spot. For the three monsters I trace their armatures from the sketch to a separate piece of paper. As you can see, I only trace the armatures partially because they are symmetrical. Here, for the ogre, I can use one sketch to bend both arms so that I am sure that they are the same length. Also, you can see I added a little bit of green stuff to the torso to make sure everything stayed in place. I will go into more detail on green stuff later on in this video. To create an armature for the head, I take a small piece of wire and bend it in half. I then gently squeeze the bend as sharp as I can get it and give it a couple of twists. Attaching the head to the rest of the armature can be a little bit troublesome. I usually grab the head and the torso with a plier and twist the wires around the torso. After that I cut off the excess wire and add a drop of super glue to make sure they stay in place. The head of the dragon is made in a similar way but I use a little trick to create a long neck. Just as with the normal sized head I start with a bent piece of wire but instead of twisting it by hand, I use a hook mounted in a drill. This is super quick and the result is a lot better than if I had done this by hand. And the tail is made using the same technique and attaching them to the rest of the armature is the same as with a small head. Now that all the proportions of the armatures are done, it's time to give them a pose. I made some sketches for the player characters, but for the monsters I kind of improvised. The pose of a mini can tell a lot about their personality, so I try to think about what I want them to show. I'm imagining this dwarf cleric running into battle, but you might want them to be more timid or noble, maybe. Here you can see me working on the orc fighter. To make sure the sword also has a metal structure inside, I intentionally left one of the arms longer than necessary. Later on, I can sculpt the sword onto this. Um, if I would be making these miniatures with the intent to cast them, I would make weapons like this separately. I might do a similar series for sculpting for casting in the future. Let me know if you'd be interested in this. When I'm happy with the pose, I mount the minis to a piece of wood. I mark the spot and use a small drill to make the holes. After that, I super glue them in place. These wooden blocks function as handles for sculpting. I will remove them later on and put them on proper playing bases. These bases will be shown in probably the last episode of this series. In the next episode I will start sculpting using polymer clay, a clay that you bake in the oven. However, it doesn't stick to metal wire quite easily and to help it stick I cover the armatures in green stuff. Green stuff is an epoxy putty that cures by mixing equal parts of the yellow and blue part. Um, green stuff is really sticky and it's therefore a good choice as a base layer. The green stuff cures in about an hour, so I try not to mix too much at once. I prefer to mix a little more than to have to throw it away. After I mix it, I squish it flat onto my thumb and use a small spatula to take strips of putty to sculpt with. Even though the green stuff is sticky, it can still be difficult to get it to stick on your armature. It might stick to your finger, your tools, or maybe your armature is a bit greasy. To help with this, you might consider sanding your armature to help the putty grip onto it. Another thing I do is I use a little bit of hand cream on my tools so that they don't stick to the putty. 
To help the green stuff grip onto the armature here, I start by the shoulder. Here I can use the putty on the torso that is already there to give me something to grip onto. After that I can go along the arm, gently pushing each side around the metal wire until they touch. Here I am further along the first layer. I take a small strip of putty and attach it to the green stuff that is already on the miniature. This gives me a great anchor point from which I can continue along the leg. After that, you can see me use my fingernail to keep the putty in place and use my sculpting tool to fold the putty around the wire. Here is a mini with the first layer done. As you can see, it is not smooth at all. But it is okay. The only thing that is really important is that the layer is thin enough so that it doesn't stick out of the sculpt at a later stage. And that's the end for this episode of Generic Fantasy Miniatures. Uh, in the next episode I will start sculpting using polymer clays and I will talk a little bit about the tools I use and about anatomy. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more. I also have an Instagram page where I post regular updates on the stuff that I'm working on, so check out the link in the description below. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time.